Sports called and Sydney's Autumn Carnival officially closed down at Randwick yesterday with the Group 1 Champagne Stakes. This is a $250,000 race for two-year-olds over 1,600 metres. Therefore, it's a test of stamina and usually a reliable guide to the spring staying races. Triske, the early favourite for the Golden Slipper, proved her worth with a last stride win. The Champagne Stakes was seen as a match race between the brilliant filly Triske and the top colt Centro. Centro had won his last three, and Triske had won five out of her seven starts. Triske was sent out the favourite at 10 to 9 on. She was ridden by the top jockey Mick Dipman, but they left it very late in the straight before asserting their superiority. Triske is right on Centro's heels as they turn for home, and she'll have the last shot at the Colt, and then shot of comfort, and Somalia as last as they straighten for the run in. Past the 400 mark, and Wist again headed late Jester. Centro and let's hurry further out. Cassidy looking over the shoulder for Triske, and she's right there, Jim, as they come to the 200 mark. Wist is the leader. Let's hurry running a big race. Centro can't go on. Triske taking a while to wind up. Wist is in front from let's hurry. Triske is now charging at them on the outside. Side, West in front, Triske, Somalia bursting through in the middle. What a finish, I think Triske. I think Triske in the last stride from Somalia. Tight for third, let's hurry. It was such West a thrilling finish, the owner of Triske, there. Jeff White, had to talk the trainer, Jack Denham, into believing their filly had won the race. He said, no, we haven't won and ran third. And I said, no, I think we won. And we rushed down the stairs to watch the replay. <laughs> and sure enough, we got there. Triske's victory completes a great autumn carnival for Mick Dipman and he has high hopes for the filly in the spring. When she gets about a mile and a quarter mile and a half, she's bred to stay and I think she's got a great future. Makes up for the slipper in some way, I suppose? Yes, well, it never makes up for a slipper, you know, it's a, a million after slipper, but still it's a very nice consolation. So from what Mick Dipman says, watch out for Triske in the Oaks at Flemington in November and she has claims to be the top filly of the season. There's no doubt about who the top two-year-old is. That's Canny Ladd. Well, the other feature at Randwick was the St Ledger Stakes, once the domain of three-year-olds, but now open to four-year-olds. This year's winner, the four-year-old Mayor Chalier, has emerged as a Brisbane Cup prospect. Despite the prestige attached to the St Ledger Stakes and the $125,000 in prize money, the lineup was pretty ordinary. Chalier has been in good form three seconds in a row, including runner-up to King Aussie in last week's Sydney Cup. Yesterday, ridden by top jockey Shane Dye, she was able to outstay her opposition. And Shalia hard ridden second last and giving the leaders about six lengths as they straighten up. Over the rise, Plum Jam still in front of Classic Chicken Royal Pardon. Sunshine Sally hard ridden behind those and Shalia down the outside. Now she's starting to hit top gear. At the 200, Plum Jam is tackled by Classic Chick. Shalia's pounced on them. Shalia hits the lead 100 metres out and this little mare's going to, to score a thoroughly deserved win. Shalia hard ridden drawing away in the last bit. Wins the St Ledger in a breeze. Dal Raffin Got up for... The Brisbane Carnival got underway with the $60,000 Courier Mail Classic at Doombin and the favourite was the top three-year-old girding, Vesed Jabbar, who'd won five out of his six starts. He was sent out at five to four, but John Aron, a consistent galloper who'd been second in the Coca-Cola Cup at his last start, prevailed at eight to one. 400 metres to go and he's moved away from them. Vic Jabbar is four in front as they straighten up. Sharman getting anxious on Piper's bell. He's pulled a whip on her and he hasn't gone for the leader as yet. Now he does. He's starting to ride him along hands and heels. He's three in front. Piper's bell struggling on the outside. Knight in Paris coming out to Vic Jabbar. Bassie's pride still there. Vic Jabbar in front. 150 metres to go. He's starting to stop a little bit. John Aron's flying with Bassie's pride. Vic Jabbar in front. John Aron grabbed him and beat him. John Aron First, Vic Edjabar Bassi's pride of Mary Vale. Boy, a ripper of a run in a photo for the minor money. But... Yes, believe it or not, the horse that was in front halfway up the straight by three or four links, for Edjabar missed a place, finished in fourth placing. Well, along with the champagne stakes, the other Group 1 race contested yesterday was the $200,000 Western Australian Derby. Leading Perth trainer Wally Mitchell won the event for the first time, but not in the way he expected. Of his two runners, Mitchell preferred the New Zealand import, Gold Nugget. But it was the 12 to 1 long shot, Chipolata, ridden by apprentice Michael Lane, which picked up the $140,000 first prize. Derby Day started with the punters rechecking their form books after the favourite appraise was scratched late with a bruised hoof. The big money pushed the Buster O'Malley trained Royal Flush into favouritism, even though it hadn't raced for four months. Vegas Vixen was attempting to become only the third filly in 40 years to win the Derby. The punters thought she had a good chance, backing her into 11 to 4 second favourite. But right from the start, she showed a distinct disliking to Barrier 16. She's sat down, Vegas Vixen. Albuino's hopped off onto the up upright. After a lengthy delay, they finally got a start. 
now. They're in and they're off. The best to get going was uh, Chipolata near the inside. Great Trooper is showing speed. And Royal Flush is being ridden hard in the early part by Jason Oliver taking up a forward berth. In front of Gold Nugget being sent around the outside and Karma Dancer will be prominent. But coming down to the winning post the first time in the big long striding Chipolata will take them past the post a length on uh, Great Trooper. While Wally Mitchell's more fancied New Zealand import Gold Nugget struggled, Chipolata was doing it easy. At the 500 and Chipolata giving a bold exhibition of front running has led uh, throughout and takes them down to the turn. About two and a half lengths clear on Royal Flush. Is the uh, inexperience and the lack of racing starting to show? He's hard ridden now. Oliver pulled the whip. A couple of lengths to Karma Dancer running on and then Gold Nugget followed by Malavara and down the outside is fine in. Vegas Vixen doing nothing. At the 200 though it's Chipolata well clear from Royal Flush Karma Dancer and then fine in and Cheros is running on, but Chipolata's going to lead throughout and win the derby. Chipolata goes down to score two lengths on Royal Flush, an outstanding effort first up. A half head away third was Karma Dancer. Yes, the West Australian derby yesterday in Perth. Well, remember the story Sports World presented a few weeks ago on leading jockey Wayne Harris. Harris won the Golden Slipper 11 years ago on Century Miss and appeared set to launch himself into the 1980s. But after riding five winners in one day at Randwick and finishing second in the 80-81 Premiership, a succession of shocking injuries brought Harris's career to a standstill. At one stage, doctors cut a tumour out of Wayne's brain and told him he wouldn't ride again. But Wayne has fought back earlier this year. He won the Blue Diamond Stakes on the Arab Sheikh's Philly Mahassan. Well, Wayne's now off to continue his career in Ireland, but he's hit a snag. His wife, Linda, is expecting their first child on Tuesday. That was the day he was set to fly out to join Kevin Prendergast's stable. Wayne will wait until after the big occasion, then go to Ireland and not return oh, yeah. before October. So we wish the Harris as well, and good luck to Wayne in Ireland. We'll take a break on Sports World. Still plenty more to come, including IndyCars.